everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm going to try out the Rutan Model 158 Pond Racer from V Sky Labs. It's a unique plane, it is a payware plane, and it looks like this. So, obviously, we're in experimental flight mode. I already tried it once without experimental flight mode, uh, which is in the settings here. Experimental flight model. You have to check mark that for it to have the intended effects. And um, yeah, the when I tried it out without that, it was fairly placid. It wasn't a very exciting plane. I hope it's a little bit more exciting now. It's got two very powerful turboprop engines in the front. It doesn't have much visibility in the cockpit, <laughs> as you can see. I mean, not of the ground anyway. Well, I mean, you can sort of see over there. I, I bet with uh, track IR it'd be better, uh, but anyway, I don't have that on right now, and well, taking a look at the cockpit before we start flying, uh, it's not, it's one of the test pilot kinds of planes from V Sky Labs, but it's not the same level as the HE-162 in the cockpit because, of course, it's a modern plane with composites and all that business. Uh, the seat looks pretty good, the floor and all, but you know, it's slicker by nature and doesn't have the weathering that the HE-162 has. And, well, we'll see whether it has any obvious failures. Uh, the HE-162, of course, I kept pushing it to explode and it did explode for me and we'll see how this goes. Uh, but anyway, brakes off. Throttle up. I'm at 75% throttle here. Now it's got two large engines in the front, so even though it's a tail dragger, I don't expect to be too hard to handle because they are contra-rotating. Okay. Yep, fairly smooth. Gear up. And since they're powerful, it climbs very well. And I have to actually mitigate that with some trimming here. Bit wobbly. We're at Edwards Air Force Base, of course, where things get tried. I don't know to what I do have XP realistic, which adds effects. Uh, well, it says enable there, so maybe it's disabled right now. Yeah, it's off. Okay, so this bounciness has nothing to do with that plugin, so that's fair enough. So this is how it is without that business. And I guess we can turn off the boost pumps, maybe. That's back here. They said it's VR ready, so a lot of the flick switches are... Well, I mean, I think most things are working in here. It even has an iPad that you can click and put up there, and it'll have maps and everything. Open street map maps. I'll put that away for now, though. Um, down here. Yep. So lots of clickable regions, and let's see how fast it goes. I'm still at 75% throttle. Uh, as far as scenery goes, just to note, I have US orthophotos. This is not the default scenery. It is tending to the right a bit, so I'm going to do aileron trim. It's got an interesting sound to it. Now, technically, the pond racer would have only had about 15 minutes of fuel, because it's a racer. But they've given it more substantial tankage, and it can fly for about an hour and a half with a full tank. Well, fuel mixture doesn't have any drastic effect right now. The propeller pitch, which we actually have a lever for over there, and that has more of a drastic effect, even with a small change. And we see the RPMs going down too when we change that, but let's keep that up. We're at 331 knots ground speed and still climbing. We can flatten that out a bit. Indicated airspeed is 285 knots. And we're still at 75% throttle. I guess we should go to LA and see how it performs there. So we're heading south. 
at this point after trimming it out it's flying very smoothly we're very much trimmed nose down you can see there and again that's because it it's very energetic but let's go above the mountains here I do like Burt Rutan planes they are very inventive and of course instantly recognizable but this one did end up uh, killing its pilot apparently it was due to an oil leak and an engine failure as a result I don't know exactly which engines they fit on here, but the ones it had, well actually I can check. The ones it had were 600 horsepower. It was designed to carry 1000 horsepower engines, but they never fit those. These are Pratt & Whitney PT6 turboprops. These have uh, 680 shaft horsepower. So not too different from the ones that actually flew okay well it's been pretty consistently in the 330 knot ish range but I'm gonna put it to full power now and I'm gonna try and keep it flat here too I mean it is a peculiar plane for people with peculiar needs I suppose it would be nice to have it in uh, Flight Sim 2020 and be able to race with other people. Have a Pond Racer Racing League or something. 372 knot ground speed, 310 indicated. Downtown LA is somewhere to the right over there. Ah, oh, there it is. I think at this altitude we're gonna stick around 315 knots indicated airspeed and 370 something knots ground speed at the moment. I don't expect there to be many much wind right now so that's not affecting things. Yep, so that's about the expect expected performance of this plane. So we are descending. You can see that the red line on the speed is all the way up at 460 knots indicated. I think it's supposed to be Mach 0.7. I wonder how fast I can cross the country in this. I mean, you have to take into consideration that it doesn't have the range to cross the country. Uh, so we would have to stop at places. So 400 knots almost speeding right along. Let's see outside. A little bit choppy here in LA. I'm not sure how much the handling differs between the experimental flight model and how it is by default it doesn't feel too different but there might be subtleties I think we'll try and follow a highway closely and see how it handles like that you can hear the sounds changing as far as the engines when I throttle So that's good. The sound sounds are good. I mean, in a way, the nature of the engines makes for a somewhat annoying sound, with the especially with the small propellers and everything, sort of a buzzing deal. So all right, let's follow this freeway. little bit away from it
the, uh, the plane feels very smooth. Very smooth. Much less drama than I was expecting. But again, it is a modern plane, so it has those refinements. It doesn't feel fly-by-wire, at least, so there's that. It can definitely handle turns. The only reason I'm not going any lower is because sometimes we get electrical towers. So, don't want to bump into those. Otherwise, it's uh, flying so well that I would, hey, there's a runway there, that I would uh, be tempted to go lower. Uh, the frame rate is good for me. I hope the recording is good, too. I think it's time to land, though. Well, there's a runway right there. I guess we'll start slowing down and land here. He's got to land at LAX, but he will do. It'd be a pretty annoying sound to hear flying overhead, though. It's going really slow there. We haven't really done a proper climb test. Oh, it's stalling like that. You can sort of hear it. Let's go fast and do a climb test before I land. I initially thought that maybe it'd be able to go straight up with the powerful engines, but I don't think... Well, I can't do it for long, let me put it that way. Okay, 322, well, 340 knots indicated. So I'm gonna pull up. We are at full throttle. It's beginning to protest already. It's You can see it's yawing to one side, a good indication that it does not like this. But we got to 10, well 9,000 feet right there before it decided to yaw like this. And that's a pretty good behavior for it to have. So stall behavior is pretty tame. Okay, well, we see the airport. We just need to slow down. Okay, I think I can put the gear down. That's an interesting sound. That's a very interesting sound for landing gear. There is a fuel pressure warning light there. Uh, come on. It is a tail dragger. Uh, okay. So it's got that sort of thing going for us, meaning that we don't want to hit the brakes too hard. Uh, because it's going to want to go down like that. See, that is me hitting the brakes briefly. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting. All right. Actually, they, uh, they noted that there is no known taxi behavior for this plane because they never taxied it. It was sort of towed out to the runway. So, but I think they've sort of made taxiing doable. So as I try and find a taxiway here, I think I'll wrap it up. So there you have it, the Rutan Model 158 Pond Racer. 
or scaled composite spawn racer. A very interesting plane and we'll see what I end up doing with it. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.